Hey guys, welcome to the last science lesson for T7. Uh, you guys have been doing so well, and now we've come to the very last lesson for science. So that's fantastic. All right, now let's jump in and finish the last lesson. This is about applying the scientific method to interpret a scientific investigation. Now, as you are pursuing a nursing career, you can consider yourself a healthcare and scientific professional. I think this is the reason behind scientific reasoning portion of T's science. You have to be able to use logic and uh, your knowledge to look at evidence, to look at the correct scientific method uh, in order to interpret data and then reach appropriate scientific conclusion. Okay, you can see in the table, there's a couple new objectives, but it's really just the old content from T6. Uh, now they have a different wording, but again, it's really old content. So the first learning objective is exactly the same. So we're going to skip that. And the second, now in T6, it's to determine the strengths and weakness of a scientific investigation. Now in T7, it's slightly different. You need to be able to describe a simple experimental design to test a hypothesis. There's so this word hypothesis. It looks like this is new content in T7, but really it's been covered in T6. The study manual, it talks about hypothesis and experimental design. So this is really not new. So don't think that you have to learn a lot of new information. All right, the next learning objective in T7, identify dependent variables, independent variables, experimental controls. So again, all these things have been mentioned in T6. And um, I personally have included questions on those things in the science to practice questions for T6. And then the last learning objective in T7 is determine whether experimental results or models support or contradict a hypothesis prediction and a conclusion. So we have actually touched on this in lesson 26. Remember I said that you know part of this content will be covered in lesson 28. So there's a lot of overlap there. So we're just gonna go over that in this lesson. And you can see in T6, it mentions a hypothesis too, right? And then basically you need to be able to tell whether a hypothesis is supported by the evidence or not, which is really exactly the same as um, this last objective in T7, right? Just decide whether, you know, the data, the results, the models support or contradict the hypothesis. Now let's look at some of the key study points, really just kind of the key information for this lesson. Now, based on research questions, right, you have to have a, a, a basic research question first before you can develop your hypothesis and a prediction. For example, your research question is to look at the amount of carbon dioxide and the blood pH, right? That's something that's pretty important in anatomy and physiology. Let's say that's what you want to research. And first, you're going to develop a hypothesis, right, for this research question. A hypothesis provides an explanation for a phenomenon. It doesn't necessarily tell you, you know, what the data is going to look like. It just provides a scientific explanation. So for this case about um, carbon dioxide and the blood pH, the hypothesis can be too much carbon dioxide will lower the blood pH. Because, right, we're looking at explanation, because carbon dioxide can react with the water and that generates a weak acid. And then the acid will make the blood pH lower. So that's a hypothesis. And what's your prediction? The prediction will be something that you can directly measure, right? So the prediction could be you may have different amounts of carbon dioxide, right? The more carbon dioxide you put into blood, the lower the blood pH will be, right? That's something you can measure. You can measure how much carbon dioxide is introduced into the blood and you can directly measure the blood pH, right? So that's the prediction. More carbon dioxide, the lower the pH will be. 
But a lot of times the people use a hypothesis and prediction interchangeably. And I really don't think that ATI will care about the distinction between hypothesis and the prediction. So as long as you have some idea what these two are, you don't have to differentiate those two. Just know that hypothesis prediction provides an explanation for a phenomenon. And it allows you to measure data and then see if your data support your prediction. Now, when you conducted the experiment to test your hypothesis, you are going to have a different types of variables, right? Now, the independent variable is what you set up before you conduct before you conduct the experiment, right? And the independent variable is the factor that you think that's going to make some changes. So in the previous case, the independent variable would be the different amounts of carbon dioxide that would be introduced into the blood. Uh, or in the example I have provided, uh, Erin wants to study how exercise may affect a heart health. Then in her experiment, the independent variable could be the amount of exercise, right? And you can be more specific. Maybe you're looking at aerobic exercise, right? So in that case, the independent variable, the factor that you can change, that you can manipulate, that will affect the outcome will be the amount of aerobic exercise. And then what about dependent variable? Dependent variable is what you measure, right? Now, again, in the case of carbon dioxide and the blood pH, Blood pH is what you're going to measure, and that's the dependent variable. How about Aaron's experiment? In Aaron's experiment, the dependent variable would be something that indicates the health of the heart. So if Aaron is looking at a particular population, right, people who live in this particular city, then that could be the incidence of heart disease. Or maybe Aaron is looking at a smaller group of people, right? People who volunteer to participate in her research. Then that could be, you know, the incidence of heart disease in 50 people or 100 people, right? All the participants in the study. Experimental controls are also known as controlled variables. So these are the variables that you should maintain the same between different treatment groups, between a control group and different experimental groups. Um, those are the factors that could confound the experimental results. So you want to keep these control variables exactly the same among all the groups so that when these groups have different outcomes, you know that the outcomes are a result of your independent variable and not any of these confounding factors. And a lot of the factors that could affect experiments, especially um, experiments on physiology, are age, gender, diet, lifestyle, you know, all those things that could affect anything similar to what Aaron is doing. Once you do the experiments, you get your data, you get your results, then you can look at the results and see if those results support or reject a hypothesis. Right? In Aaron's case, the hypothesis could be the amount of aerobic exercise can improve cardiovascular health and decrease the incidence of heart disease in a particular population. So this is just an overview of all the kind of important things, important aspects about the scientific method that you need to know for TEAS. Um, some of the details were kind of skipped, but you can watch the T6 video on this particular topic to get more information.